What's going on guys? Today I decided to do my first video uh, of the year. I know I uh, haven't been uploading many videos, but I just been super busy and uh, I'm gonna try to make up for it. So I know there's a lot of questions. Uh, well, there's not many questions, right? But there is a few questions here and there. Um, if I uh, uh, can show you guys how to install uh, card readers, um, I have a uh, different type of examples of card readers here. Um, these are installed in places where uh, they want something. Th the type of uh, location that I'm gonna be installing is, is uh, it requires something slim, you know. So we install these slim card readers. Um, this is a newer version, right? Uh, we're not gonna be getting into models of card readers and all that stuff. I'm just, it's just going to be a basic X controls wiring. Um, video and just uh, your basics of x controls today um but yeah and this is most typically what we use uh this card read right here uh, because the slim one it's uh, i believe a little bit more expensive um obviously these come with their wires in the back and then you have a uh, different type of uh, readers uh some of them with a keypad this one has a keypad and you can go ahead and badge with the key fob or a uh, badge uh, and this one here uh, is actually is actually I'm trying to zoom in here. Okay, this one has uh, these connectors here in the back, which uh, I thought I left a little bit loose. But in here in the back, uh, you can see the uh, the labels there that you typically would uh, wire onto. Um, and I'll explain that in a little bit right now. Uh, but yeah, and then you can put your key, uh, your uh, keypad number here, and uh, unlock the door. Um, so, let's get back uh, to the access controls of uh, basic wiring. Uh, so, whenever you run a cable in the access controls world, we use this uh, wire here called composite wire, or banana cable, whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, but the actual real name of this is um, composite wire which is this one right here, okay? Uh, yes, uh, pretty expensive. Uh, what is that, 1,000 feet roll? Um, anyways, uh, that gets ran from, um, from point A being your the place where you are going to have your main unit, uh, and B being the door, right, from point A to B. Um, so typically we run this wire uh, through the saline and uh, what's so not. Uh, maybe even conduit if the uh, contractor uh, provided that for us or if they wanted us to run that. Um, but usually we uh, install a three quarter inch conduit and we run this wire. You can only fit one wire uh, through that. You could fit, I'm pretty sure you could fit three of these, but we typically run one on a three quarter inch conduit, okay? Um, this wire here, um, this is what's inside of it, right? So composite wire means that it has uh, four conductors inside of it. It's uh, these four here, and uh, each one of them have uh, a roll, right? And I left this little tail here, which uh, is usually inside of this uh, wiring, excuse me. Um, and uh, this is typically what you pull to strip your wiring. Okay, so you pull that, and then it keeps on cutting through the jacket, okay? So, um, that's your wiring right there. Uh, let's zoom in real quick. Okay, this your conductor wire is right there. Now, I'll uh, explain to you exactly what uh, all these are. So, got a few examples here. So, we'll move on to the first one. And these are labeled. Hopefully, you guys can see this and read this. Uh, Try to, okay, it's backwards. So, made in the United States, of course. Uh, door contact. So this one is pretty much uh, the one with the green stripe. Um, obviously, not every single composite wiring comes with labeled or um, with that little nice green stripe there. But anyways, this one right here, is the one that we we'll use for the uh, door contact sensor, right? Door contact sensor is uh, a sensor that is mounted above the door to monitor 
uh, whenever the door is opened and closed, right? And it just lets the system know that the door has been opened and the door is now closed. And obviously within a, a certain schedule or um, whatever they end up programming on their system, uh, it could go off uh, into an alarm if it exceeds a certain time limit and uh, just uh, let them know that the door has been opened just to monitor the door. So that's that. Uh, the other one here, it's uh, this purple one. Um, what the, well, not purple, it has purple stripe. But let's zoom into it real quick. This one says uh, lock power. And yeah, it says A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, but anyways, lock power there. Uh, meaning that uh, this one is typically used for uh, your uh, lock that you're gonna be installing, right? So, uh, for example, uh, we'll get into locks and stuff like that, different type of hardware later on. But in my previous videos, I have showed that we typically use uh, door strikes, mag locks, panic bars, uh, retraction action do uh, doors, um, cylindrical locks, mortise locks, uh, crash bars with vertical rods, concealed vertical rods, all kinds of electronic locks, right? Uh, so this one is typically the wire that we run down the wall for this one. And we hook up, um, and I'll show you what's inside of this real quick. Uh, so before we skip uh, the door contact sensor, uh, so this is your door contact sensor, the first one that I already mentioned. Just two wires here, just uh, to monitor the door. And then the purple one that we were talking about, your lock power, um, that one is this one right here. And it has four conductors, right? Uh, usually um, we use the black and red to indicate, uh, obviously, um, well, not obviously, but our color code most of the time is uh, uh, red being your positive and uh, black being your ground negative. And then we have a spare, right? Uh, but this spare could go ahead and uh, either uh, be used for uh, another lock or it's just uh, it's good to have, right? It's a spare. So typically what I like to do is just to call this one up and just leave it there. You know, for the future, you never know. You might need it. Obviously, I cut this off, this little wire here, this little string. But that string uh, is inside of every single conductor. It's pretty much the same thing that what I showed y'all. You guys pull that and it keeps on cutting through the jacket, okay? Um, so yeah, this is the one that we dropped for the lock power. Uh, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, we have a, uh, let's go ahead and do the this one right here. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna try to hurry up guys so I don't have to take much uh, of y'all's time and make this video too long. Request slash spare, okay? Rex, request to exit. This one is pretty much the one that we use uh, above the door. Um, oh, and did I mention, uh, uh, what's his name um, is uh, joining us today. Uh, he's enjoying a croissant and a cup of coffee. But anyways, um, so <clears throat> request to exit. This uh, wire is uh, typically used for a, well, a request to exit device, right? So uh, inside of the door, on the secure side, we install a device that uh, whenever somebody wants to make an exit, so the door doesn't go off an alarm, they need to request to exit, okay? So they cannot just open the door and just get out because the door will go under an alarm. The door contact sensor wire and device will tell if the door has been opened. And the system without either, um, and we'll get to this one right here, without either badging on the door okay to get in or requesting to exit to get out the door will go off on alarm so if somebody were to want to prop the door open and uh, a lot of people have done that the door sensor will tell okay somebody has just gone through the door and uh, they didn't badge and they did not request to exit meaning that it's going to go on into trouble. So to get in, you got a badge with your reader and to get out, you need to um, use a motion detector device, which is gonna pretty much sense you exiting. It's just a, a trigger. So whenever you're walking out the door, 
it senses you walking out. So it gives the system a clear and then you are able to exit. Um, there is different types of request to exit devices. Um, and uh, typically inside of this uh, request to exit device, we have this, uh, the one with the red stripe. Like I said, it says REX on it, request to exit. And this one has four conductors in it. Typically these uh, devices require two wires for um, power to power up the device and two wires for the sensor input. So this is the input signal going back to the panel saying, okay, there is motion detected. Uh, let's go ahead and let them out. And this one to power up the device. Okay. And like I said, the door contact sensor, which is just these two wires, is another input. Forgot to mention that. So this is just another input sensing that the door has been open and closed. Just a signal going back, typically, uh, to the panel, just opening and closing the circuit. And I'll explain door contacts later in another video. But anyways, then we have uh, our car reader cable here. And uh, I hope to not be... Uh, boring you guys so much but we have this other car reader wire here uh, this one typically says as well it's on this other side card reader wire and just a quick note here it re it tells you as well how much wire you got left and your uh, spool so um, is if this was like a, a thousand feet spool, it will tell you that you have 92 feet left. Uh, typically, uh, the composite wire tells you that here. But anyways, just a little thing I wanted to add there. Um, car reader wiring. So this one. Just like I said, we're just gonna do be going over the basics. So there's a bunch of wires here, but in reality. The main basic wires to make a card reader work are going to be these four. And we'll get into details and discussions about what, what are the other ones about. But we are just doing your basics. So uh, two of these wires are going to be to power up the motion. And two of these are going to be your weekend communication um, going back to the panel. So this is pretty much your... Uh, data one, data two, zeros and ones, communicating back to the panel, just uh, reading your credentials, and this is just to power up your uh, card reader. Uh, and I'm gonna show you guys here real quick how we typically wire these, just real quick. I'm not gonna get, like I said, into many details. Uh, I think this one's not ready, and this one either. But anyways, if, for example, I had this, end of the wire here um, typically these uh, card readers come with uh, manuals and uh, yes I highlighted a couple things here for y'all um, like I said the most basic stuff that you really need for this card reader to be able to work is your Wigan data 1 which is your clock Wigan data 0 which is your data communication which is your white and green and then your black and red black being your ground and red being your voltage and I just highlighted the drain just because I wanted to uh, let you guys know that that's a very important wire that you need to run to uh, well hook up as well uh, because sometimes um, if you are running your composite wire through uh, some areas where uh, there is a, a lot of noise um, meaning uh, a lot of uh, static going on uh, if we're running uh, the wire if we're running this composite maybe near some high voltage areas or where there's like a lot of uh, uh, generators going on uh, mechanical rooms and stuff like that sometimes this pick up, picks up noise and the card reader is not going to want to work properly the communication back and forth is not going to want to um, work so I typically wire up the drain cable and the drain I'll show you as follows here. Where are you at? Okay, here. So this drain, other than your black and red and white and green, you hook up your drain cable 
and uh, it's typically here. I'll show you guys here real quick. So I apologize for the mess, but yeah. So you, there's your drain cable here, and uh, you would just grab these two, okay, and twist them both together. And you have successfully hooked up your drain. That way, uh, there is uh, either whatever static it picks up, it just uh, goes and ends up uh, getting landed on a true ground um, in the head end. So there is no interference with the communication, uh, the data traveling within your white and green wires. Um, just show you guys real quick how we typically hook these up. Um, if these were to be your wires, and I'll show you guys real quick. So here, uh, you just put this in here, okay, like so. You grab your crimper, crimp it three times. And that's how you wire up uh, car readers or electronics. We use these, uh, they're called the uh, Dolphins. Um, I think that's the brand manufacturer. Uh, but we also uh, call them uh, beanies. I don't know why they call them beanies. Uh, I think because they, they look like a, I don't know, like a beanie, I guess. Um, anyways, so real quick here, for example, if I were to be hooking up the red wire for this card reader, and I do have the red wire here, um, I would typically, you could use your, uh, snips to cut or strip the wire as long as you don't damage there's a lot of people are not a big fan of uh technicians doing that but i mean i've been doing this for a while so who cares and here typically i'd like to put these in a cross and then twist them together okay put them nice and straight and um i forgot to mention this uh beanie right here it's uh white it's um, meant to be for interior installations and this blue one has like a little gooey stuff in there and these are meant to be installed uh, in the exterior you see that gooey stuff coming out and then it gets hardened and uh, it's uh, for exterior uh, terminations uh, if a car reader were to be installed in a uh, perimeter door we typically use these and if it's an interior door or any interior device like a motion detector or anything uh, we installed these uh, these are definitely way cheaper than these so I would recommend to install nothing but this but it depends who you work with you know whatever they provide you with um, but these are typically the uh, connectors that we use and uh, yeah guys that's pretty much it um, I don't think I skipped anything but uh oh yeah like i said uh, i forgot his name but uh emmett uh yeah uh but anyways um hope you guys liked the video uh i know it's definitely too long um but i will make another video and uh, we will go from there thank you guys for watching and if you guys have any questions just please leave them down below and i will uh try to post my email on my description so in case you guys uh, need any uh, tutoring or have questions maybe we could have uh, you know uh, a group message something going on where we could all get our answers and uh, questions and answers going but all right guys happy new years and uh hope you guys' uh, goals and dreams get accomplished peace